Today, the title is the Hosea who cried out return. But return to whom? We have to return to the Lord. Actually, this is the, this is not the meaning that God telling to the Hosea, but God is keep telling us to us and then the non-believer as well. Let's do the confession of the work of faith. Matthew chapter 16, 16, Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. All of the people that who worship in here and who worship through the online, let's bless each other who sit next to us. In this last age, God gave us the covenants. Let's bless each other who sit next to us. So if we look at this age or if we look at this world through the physical ways and through the physical ways, like we just feel that oh, there is no hope at all. But what if we look at this like through the spiritual eyes and through the gospel way, actually... This is not the you know crisis, but there is we can really you know you know restart, and then we are able to save other people. So actually, through our strengths, we are not able to do this. So through the wisdom, through the mystery, and through the power of the Christ, please through that things let us we have to really save other people. So in the introduction, we have to really, you know, understand several things. So in this world, the relationship is very important. But today I want to talk about what kind of relationship. Because in this world, we cannot live alone. We have to interact with each other and other people. And then we have to really cannot live alone. But what is the most important thing of the relationship, promise, and faith? So today, I want to talk about the relationship first in the introductions. There are several relationships in this world. The first one, between the relationship between husband and wife. What is that? So we can see Genesis chapter 4, verses 1. It says that Adam made love to his wife Eve. Actually, made love means like know each other. So they become a husband and a wife. And they stay together and they made love each other. It's me. We know each other. It means we know each other. And in a Hebrew language, we call this one as yada. Yada means like know. Know something or know. So how can we know God? We have to know God. Same as relationship between a husband and a wife. So we have to know until like, I mean, same as like how husband and wife know each other. At that time, God say that God knows us. If we say that we know God, it means that God also know us. And then at that time, we can really use the yada. But not only the relationship between a husband and a wife, but we also have the relationship between parents and child as well. And then not only this, but there is a relationship between the parents and child as well. So do you think that our children really comes from us? Or comes from our parents? Yes, physically, yes.
but before our ch- before we think that our children comes from us we always think that our children's they comes from god actually we are human and then there is no power that we can just you know pass on to the great things to our children but the negative one or is that something which is not good it's very easy to you know pass on to our younger generation or our children's and then sometime you know we feel that we got some you know speech we inheritance from our parents that which is i don't want to have so we have to always remember that you know sometimes the negative things or the something that i don't want to really pass on to but automatically pass on to our you know children so actually you know if you see everything in a physical way there is no hope there is no future so we have to really remember that where we comes from we comes from god when we really know the christ who is the beloved son of god we can have the better life than our parents And then number three, the relationship between colleague or friends. Oh yeah, we have friends or we have colleague in our workplace. Actually, this colleague or our friends very important in our life. And then maybe we feel that we're very close to them. But what is the most important thing? This is very weird that actually very close or very close but at the same time sometimes we suffer because of our colleague and then sometimes we suffer because of the friends because it's not easy to really you know understand each other and it's so many people are suffering when we have some problem in our relationship So today we have to really know what kind of relationship. So number 2, today what we have to really understand through the relationship. So you have to really remember today that you have to be with whom? Firstly, you have to be with whom? So okay, in the Genesis chapter 3, what is talking about? Actually, Genesis chapter talking about our, I mean, me. Genesis chapter talking about myself. Me is very important. Oh, my life starts from myself. But if myself is not related to God, if myself is not related to the gospel, everything, every problem starts from yourself. I mean, every start, every problem starts from myself. And in Genesis chapter six, you, if Genesis chapter three talking about myself or me, and then Genesis chapter six talking about you, so when we look at the Genesis chapter eleven. We start to talking about we. So that's why the starting is, I mean, the beginning is very important. So before you think about the relationship between husband and wife, parent and child, and a colleague or friends, you have to really enjoy the gospel first. You have to really understand the gospel first. And then after that, the meeting i mean the meeting that you you have it was going to be a great blessing do you think that water and fire can be one actually water and fire cannot be one if i don't have the gospel all of the people that who met me actually they are fire and we are water it means we cannot really you know understand each other we cannot really close each other 
because myself, even myself, I leave myself like self-oriented and then I leave myself for me. And then that person also leave, you know, their life for themselves and the self-oriented. And it's two self, I mean, two people that who has a, who live their life according to them, like self-oriented, how can they really understand each other? So for me, I am water. And then if other people who is fire, actually we cannot be one. But how can we are able to be one? What is the beneficial way that what is the like synergy effects? How can we are able to have the synergy effects? So we, the most important thing is kind of like we need a soaked pot, like we need a pot. So it means that we need a pot because, you know, when we make a food, you know, we just put inside of, inside of the water. I mean, we put the water inside of the pot and then we just fire and then maybe we can make a, we can cook some great food and it was going to be a great, you know, beneficial way and it was going to be a great benefit. So actually by ourselves and then by our strength, actually we cannot be one with other people. And then now, moreover, Genesis chapter 11, everyone is focusing on the success. And then everyone wants to succeed. If succeed without, don't know what is the gospel, what is the blessing of the meeting, and then that is not a real success. If I really enjoy the gospel and if I really enjoy the, you know, blessing of the meeting, then we will live our life for give the glory to God and we are able to be a oneness and actually we call this one as a true success but today okay we already know that we have to be with whom and we have to be with whom but then today number three what I mean we must have the relationship but relationship for what now here this person why we have to sit here right now the person who sit next to us who are they so when you really understand this one accurately when you really realize this one correctly all of your past and present and future you can see and you will see everything in advance You came here, oh, but you just come here, but you don't think what is the reason the why you have to come. But but another person who really grab hold on to the covenant and then just come here and worship God. Do you think they're already saying? Uh, if you think the person that who's next to us, oh, you just think that one of your church member or one of your just family or one of your just husband or one of your children's. But if another person think that, oh, this is my coworker that who will go to the journey, I mean, journey of the covenant together, do you think they're already sane? So I just want to ask for what? We must have this relationship for what? The one who have, you know, great vessel. There are some several characteristics that who already succeed what what is their characteristic who can embrace other people even though feel that we are different but can you know embrace can really accept and can really you know cooperate each other like can go to the same you know, there are many people that who go to the same directions, but still have this different, you know, different thinking and then different opinions. So actually, even though they seem like they are going to the same direction, but actually they have the very small vessels. 
So I told you already that, you know, the relationship in our life is very important. Sometimes we feel very, feel frustrated and drains from the, you know, human relationship. So some people, they just leave their house and they just go to the mountain and they just become a monk. Or they just want to be alone. It means that they just really, you know, uh, do not really enjoy the blessing that what God gave to us. But if we really enjoy this one very well, we are really our true humans. So, sorry to tell you, but if we really, you know, cannot really enjoy the relationship and then we just leave from house and then we just want to be alone and then we cannot really enjoy, actually we are not human at all. It's me. So, I, the relationship is based on the promise and faith. So if we are inside of this promise and then faith, this is the way that we are able to live our life as a true humans. So through the Hosea, I really wish you confirm, like we confirm again. So main body. Yeah, Hosea and Gomer. Hosea and Gomer, who is like, you know, Hosea's wife. I think Hosea's message is a little bit very interesting and it's very special. Actually, Hosea was the prophet. But it's very weird. And then Hosea told, you know, uh, God told Hosea that you have to go and then you have to marry with Gomer, who is the very adulterous wife. And then you must have the adulterous, you know, son or daughter. So if other people look at this Bible, how can they really understand about this? Yeah, I mean, if we really understand this one theory, common sense, actually, we cannot really understand. And I think non-believer, they will really not, do not understand. But there is a really, you know, hidden reasons that why God told Hosea to marry with the adulterous wife. Okay, number one, let's see. Hosea is a faithful husband. I told you already in the introductions that the relationship between a husband and a wife is very important. So that's why for young adults, the marriage is very important. Actually, marriage is very simple. Just male and female, they marry each other. Uh, but if female marry with female, if male marry with male, we cannot call this one as a marriage. So marriage means male and then female has to marry each other. So, and then husband is very important, but in here, Hosea is the faithful husband. Actually, but in here, you have to really see the shadow of the Christ. So in the Bible, it says that who is the faithful husband? Christ. Actually, Christ is the groom of all of the church members. If we accept the Jesus Christ, and then if if we become a child of God, you know, God told us that every individual, we are the God's temple, and we are the bride of the Christ. So what is the relationship between husband and a wife? You know, Christ, who is our husband, he will take a responsibility of the church like forever. And then that church has to obey, like, you know, obey 100% to the Christ. So before marriage, the most important thing is we have to be the bride of the Christ first. This is very important. So when we really have experience of this, you can really enjoy your marriage life. 
and then you can really understand about the marriage truly. And then two, uh, number two, the another one is Adam. Actually, because of the Adam, one person, you know, all because of the one man who is the Adam, the everyone start to everyone start to become a sinner. But actually, Adam he loves his wife so much. You know, when Eve gave the you know apple of the knowledge of good and evil to the Adam. Even though Adam already knew that he will die for sure. I mean, he will die in a spiritually for sure. But he just ate. And he really loved his wife. And number three, another example is like Hosea. He just really followed the word. I mean, he just really obeyed to God. And then he just, okay, go and then just met and marry with the Gomer. And then, uh, yeah, they bear, you know, they pregnant and they bore, they bore a son. But Gomer, she run away again. And Gomer just go meet another guy. But even though, you know, Gomer already run away and then met another guy. But at, the, at that time... God told Hosea that you bring your possession, you bring your money, and then you just give the money to the guys that who Gomer met, and then please bring Gomer to back, bring Gomer back. So this is what you know God told Hosea. So number two, so you have to really understand the Gomer, Gomer first, like who is the adulterous wife. This, you know, adultery, where it comes from. Yeah, this is, comes from the Satan. Being adulterous, actually, this is comes from the Satan. This is comes from the Genesis chapter 3. And then actually, this is comes from our family and our family line. Yeah, there is a, some backgrounds behind of this. So what is the important thing? If the family line is adulterous, then their family, I mean, their younger generation or posterity, there will be also adulterous as well, like pros prosmicus. And then they, you know, marry each other and then they, you know, give a birth, right? So it will be very like, you know, give an impact to their, you know, younger generation and their children's. And then in here, we have to look at the remnants very correctly. So this is very great contents for our, you know, younger generations that how we really understand about this. Actually, posterity, we just call in another name is remnants. Yeah, we remain. We remain whom? We remain our posterity. Like we remain our, you know, children and we remain our remnants. So if younger gen if upper generation they passed away, who will be remains younger generation and a posterity and a remnants? But there are two meaning inside of the remnants. It could be like remnants who really remain who is the remains, and then another meaning is the rubbish that who is abandoned. So through the relationship between the Hoseas and then Gomer, we have to really understand. And then if we really do not really understand about this one right now, our posterity, like our remnants, they will do not really know. So we have to really understand this. Okay, for example, like there is a very, you know, there is a one student that was very poor. And then that student go, go ask his mother, that's why we're so poor. And so complain about his situation. So his mother told, told his son, uh, her son back that, oh, yes, yes, we are poor, but there are more people that who is poor than us. 
So if parents explain in, in this way to their children, actually, there, there is no hope at all between them. Even though they're so poor, if that parents think that, okay, until now we are husband, but from now on, for my posterity, I cannot be poor anymore. Like if she has different kind of like the mindset and then different thinking, like there is a hope. Maybe she has to say that, I'm so sorry that I made this kind of happen occurred. But just giving a hope to her sons that you can really, you know, you can really begin. But in this world, you know, there are the persons, I mean, who is the rubbish, like the number of the rubbish is more than remnants. I mean, those people who is abundance, I mean, the number of the who is abundance is more than, I mean, a lot, I mean, more than the remains one. However, the person of the, I mean, the people who is abundance, they will be saved by remnants. So number two, actually, this is also talking about the relationship between God and Israel. So we have to really look at the, you know, the hidden meaning of the relationship between, you know, Hosea and Gomer. Actually, that relationship is talking about between God and the Israelites. So God is same as Hosea, that who is faithful and he has no sin at all. So what is the, what is, how we know that he's the faithful, if he promise, if he made a decision, he never changes plan. So since the beginning, you know, God has already planned everything in advance for, you know, fulfill the covenants. Because since the beginning, you know, God, you know, gave us the covenants. And since the beginning, all of the standard and then all of the all of the standard and then all of thing is you know covenant oriented. So in order to fulfill the comp covenants, you know sometimes God is, but every day like God is always waiting for us, and sometimes like God discipline us and God punish us. However, at the end, God always restore us. He is the faithful God. But what about the Gomer? Actually, Gomer is talking about the Israelites that who was corrupt. They always worshipped the idols. They were in the idolatry. Why? Because God is invisible, but idolatry is visible. And then they are so arrogant. What is the meaning of the arrogance? So it means that the states that you become a bigger than your original states. You can, do, do you know what is the balloon? Balloon, right? You can just compare between balloon. So when you blow, the balloon will gonna be a bigger. So actually the arrogance, actually we can tell that the state state of the, you know, the balloon is being a bigger. Actually, there is nothing that we can be arrogant. But when we receive some acknowledgement from others, when we receive some, you know, compliment from others, we are always trying to reveal ourselves that, oh, this is because of me and this is because of us. And then my our attitude, we're going to be changed. My, our speech, everything, we're going to be changed. So this is what we call arrogance. So what Israel peoples they they did, they worship the idols and then they, you know, are arrogance and then hip hypocrisy. So number three, what about the posterity of the I mean, younger generation of the Israel? They are wondering. They they always kind of they always live their life as a nomadic people, like wondering. Because of their upper generation, because they haven't really realized. And then it, it, it gives the impact on the posterity, like, you know, remnants. So they also, you know, they are very suffering and they wondering. 
However, the faithful God, God always trying to wait for us, and God always want to restore the posterity. Even though Gomer, even though she was corrupt, but God keep telling. God keep telling to the Hosea to go marry with Gomer because in order to save the younger generation, in order to restore the posterity, and in order to save the remnants. Actually, this is the God's will. And the another number three, the another could be the relationship between Christ and church as well. <coughs> Then who is the Christ? Okay, let's look at the Christ in the Bible. Only Christ, not just Christ, but only Christ. When we really, really enjoy the only Christ, what there are several things that we can really see. Number one, absolute impossible. If there is no Christ, if Christ doesn't work up on that. Like everything is absolute impossible. But number two, you will see this one at the same time that absolute possible, because with the Christ everything is possible. So right now God is looking for that one person that who is really know the spiritual truth. So all of the Christians, we have to really enjoy the only Christ, not just Christ. And then number two. But these days, I can really tell. I can tell you that these days, every church, you know, they are now getting lost. So, what is the you know result? They just want to in integrate with. I mean, they just want to be united with other religions. The example it could be WCC. So, can you imagine that, like you know, Christianity, like you know, who believe only Christ, we just compromise with other religions. So it means that our God has to be united with other gods. Because of what? Because why? Why this kind of things happen? Because gospel goes dim, and then everyone do not really enjoy only Christ. So if we do not really know, due to ignorance of the spiritual truth, there are many things happen. What are they? We always rely on the physical things. We always believe more science, which is visible and which is understand, which is easy to understand. So, how can we really understand the Christ? And how can we really understand the church? You have to really understand the para church and local church correctly. So that's why during the afternoons. One thirty, like we worship the Emmanuel worship, which is headquarter message, which is par message. But not only this, in our fields, because the field that we are living is very important. That's why we also have to worship in the local church. I mean, we have to really worship the local message again. So that's why you must have the balance of the para and local, and then the church that who has really have the balance of this local and para. That church is the normal church, because we can really you know apply this one to our daily life. So this relationship, I mean, we have to really know this one as well. So we have to really understand the local and para in our field as well. Or maybe the workplace that you are working right now, or the school, or anywhere that you are working right now, or you're studying, or house that you're living in, and the school that you're studying right now. If this church is the para, then your field has to be also local. So you have to really grab hold onto the message from the para, and then you have to really apply this para message to your fields, and then you have to always have the experience of the application of the message and the fulfillment of the message in your fields. 
actually, if you really want to live your life, you know, in a correct way, just follow the, I mean, follow the way that you're doing in the church. And number three, we have to be a spiritual Israel. But what is the meaning of the spiritual Israel? Actually, uh, we are not the. Actually, in the beginning, actually, we separate from God because of the Genesis chapter three problems. But because of the grace of God, we become a spiritual Israel. What is our common characteristic in our past? We worship the idols. So now we already turn our back on the idolatry and we already flee from the idolatry already. And then we are the adopted son. So you can see Romans chapter 8 verses 15. So it's talking about adoption to the sonship. Israel people. So, you know, they when when they have the inheritance, there is a, some rules that actually they if they don't want, I mean, if the parents don't want to give the inheritance to their real children, I mean, their real child, they don't need to do. But if they adopt the son or the daughter, they must give their inherit inheritance to them. So you can look at the Romans chapter 8, verses 15. We are able to call God as an Abba. Abba, like, so you can see Romans chapter 8, verses 15, due to the grace of God, you know, God gave, you know, adoption to the sonship. And then God also let us rest restore the you know, the missions that God has given to us. So when we really restore those missions that God has given to us, we can able to conquer the culture of the world. So let's look at the conclusion. <clears throat> Actually, Hosea chapter is this, the message that which is, you know, around 2,900 years ago. And then this is the, and then actually this is the king. Actually, there is the kingdom. I mean, there is the kingdom of God. Uh, sorry, there is the kind of the age of the royal, I mean, kingdom. So the at that time, you can see the uh, Hosea chapter 1 verses 1 that this is the during the reign of the Jeroboam. But at the time, actually, Jeroboam, like he's not the one that he's not the one of the king that who do not really that, you know, obey to God and then who did not really follow the gods. But, you know, at the time, you know, they already like improved, already developed, already like flourished already, but without the gospel and without the God. But actually, at the time, you know, 2,900 2, years ago, you know, the Israelites, they already have the experience of the Exodus and the wilderness and in Canaan already. And then they sold a lots of evidence already. But because of their continuous unbelief, they always, you know, rely on other powerful nations. And they always think that the other powerful nation were going to help them. And then they always, you know, continuous like idolatry and the arrogance. That's that's why they, you know, call they are collapsed and then they got a lot of hard, hardship and sufferings. However, even though at the time God always remain remained the remnants. So actually, you know, the core message of the old testament, what is that? We have to really know. We have to really understand about the posterity. God always remains the remnants in every age, even though that age that age is full of the unbelief, idol worship, and arrogance. God always wants to restore, and God always remains remnants. 
And then number two is the times of the New Testament. So finally, you know, that Messiah that, you know, um, predicts in the Old Testament, according to the, according to the promise, according to the covenants, you know, Jesus really came to this world and then he really, you know, came to this world in, hu in human flesh. So 100% God and 100% humans. And then he, he crucified on the cross and he resurrected from the death after three days and he ascended into the heaven. So everyone's already so this, but only like, you know, 12 disciples, God has, I mean, only like, you know, 12 disciples and 120 members remains. Even Old Testament and the New Testament, they are same. Even though God shows several miracles already, you know, people never believe. Even though God has already shown many things and God already let them to see uh, tons of the evidence, but they really do not believe. However, because through the remains one, through the remnants in the Old Testament and through the 12 disciples and 120 members in the New Testament, that gospel passed on to us. Then, when we look at the Old Testament and New Testament, number three, today we have to see ourselves and then we have to really look at the nowadays. So God gave us already like only gospel, only faith, only missions, and only glory. Like God gave us already. But these days we start to miss our essence. So now the church is turning into like, you know, focusing on the, you know, praying for only for blessing and then only faith for blessing and then legalism and then mysticism and then liberalism. And what is the, you know, they are now turning into, they are turned into the, in this way. So what is the mystery of the mystery? What is the miracle of the miracle? If you're able to understand this word of God, this is the great miracle in your life. Sometimes when you go to some church and then just, just pastor, they just put their hands on their, you know, put their hands on their church members and all of the church members start to, you know, fell down. And then, you know, do you think that that is the really feeling of the Holy Spirit? Maybe sometimes shaman is better than them. If they look at the how shamans they do, actually, this is, this is not that, you know, great, you know, power. So what we have to really grab hold on to, which is very, which is the very important, which is the essence. So what is the most important? 237 nations and the healing and summits. So next is the application message. Like what kind of things that we have to really grab hold on to in this chapter, in this like Hosea chapters. So Hosea chapter 14, what, what is the core message? Take words with you and return to the Lord. It doesn't mean that just return to the Lord, but it says that take words with you and return to the Lord. But not only this, but you have to look forward to the God's grace. And you have to hold on to the covenants and praise the Lord. And number two, if you really do this, I will love you freely. I will love you freely. You can see Hosea chapters 14 verses 4 to 8. But how how he will love us freely. Like Hosea chapter 6 verses 3. Uh, it says that, you know, it was going to be like, you know, as the sun rises. Yeah, what does it mean? So it says that as let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to the acknowledge Him. As surely as the sun rises, He will appear. So it means that as the sun rises, it means that He will do it, of course. He will love us freely for, you know, for, of, of course. Because, you know, the sun rises every day, right? 
at night and then after when night passed by the sun rises again in the next morning like every day so same as like that he will always love us freely like forever like and then you know uh the next is the Hosea chapter 14 verses 5 will be like the dew and then God will if you really grab hold on to the message and if you really take words with you and if you return to the Lord, God will give us the grace of God and God will give us the you know strength that is means that will be like the dew will be like the dew it's mean he will give us the strength and then what about like a flourishing juniper you can see uh hosea chapter 14 verses 8 so like a flourishing juniper it's mean that god will let us bear the another fruits and then through that person god will receive the glory from us and then that is the eternal So as the sun rises, it means that God will love us unconditionally. Like there is no reason, but he would just, you know, love us forever. And then number three, the way of the Lord. You can see Hosea chapter, chapter 14, verses 9. Yeah, as what today Fa she pray for us. It's talking about first Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us, but to who already received the salvation, who are being saved, it is the power of God. If we really, you know, grab hold onto this, the message of the cross, and if we walk in the way of the Lord, we are able to walk. And God will use us. But if we do not really grab hold on to the message of the cross, the re rebellious stumble in them, will be stumble and fell down. So today, 30 Hosea chapter, what we have to really grab hold on to. Of course, every children, we need a parents in our life. <clears throat> we need our mentor. Those people that we have the mentor, we can be a great disciple. And then we can bear another disciple. In your life, if you don't have any men spiritual mentor in your life, uh, I'm very pity on you. When I was in the idolatry, but that person that who gave us the really, you know, eternal solution to us, who gave us the gospel, actually, we must to have that, you know, spiritual mentor in our life. But if we don't have, if we have, if we don't met, if we don't meet that spiritual mentor, I mean, like, you know, non-believers, they, they, I'm um, really pity on their life. So every people in our life, we must to really meet the evangelist that who can really proclaim the gospel to us. And then the another one, we must have the friends who is really reliable friends. I'm not talking about friends, about the physical friends, I mean, worldly friends, but I'm talking about the friends that who really able to, you know, communicate and inform each other and who really know the gospel and who really know what is the meaning of the blessing of the meeting and who really know what is the genuine meaning of the success. So you must have that person as well. I mean, like co-worker and in your life, you must have your friends in your life. So what kind of the way that we have to walk just take a word and just return to the lord and then after that god will lead you and it just go to that way god we're not going to ask for our past what did you have done like god we're not going to ask for that even though in the past we are we are same as comer who is adulterous wife and we bore a uh, him or her who is the also adulterous but Hosea still just keep going, keep going, and then just pay the money and then just bring back, bring Gomer back again. 
Yeah, same. Same as Hosea. God is also looking for us. God is also waiting for us. So that's why Hosea, he cried out, return. So during this week, I really wish you guys to really receive the great blessings to return. I'm not talking about 90%, but you have to really take the words and return to the Lord's 100%. Please, those people that who are in the another way, who are in the getting lost, please, we have to really carry out our commissions to save those people that who is now in the another words, different, I mean, another way in a different way that who is getting lost, who get lost. So today we will have the training message at 2.30. I will give you the great message. Like, I mean, I will give you the two, two things that which is very important. The way to meet God and the way to enjoy God. I will explain about this. 2.30. Because God must to meet God. And then if we meet God, we must to really enjoy the Christ. So enjoy and meet is very important. So I really wish you guys enjoy this. And then during this week, I really wish you grab hold on to the, this message and then begin again. I mean, yeah, restart again with this. And bless you in the name of the Jesus Christ.